Alright, hello, uh, this is Rip Steiger. Welcome to PD Particles. This is not a new program, uh, it's been around for a little while, but I wanted to uh, show you just a couple of uh, techniques or some ideas, especially using the new driver of the uh, graphic tablet by UC Logic, or actually, you may have a monoprice tablet. That monoprice tablet uh, is really an OEM, I believe, from uh, UC Logic, uses the UC Logic driver. And they just released on uh, May, on uh, April, March uh, 25 a new version that supports Windows 8 and also dual screen, and uh, also seems to work a little bit better with um, with uh, other uh, Windows versions. So uh, when you when you use Project Dog Waffle, whether it's PD Particles or PD Pro, PD Artist, PD Owlers, any of them, uh, you might have a, a better detection of the, the, the pressure data. So uh, I want to show you uh, what happens when you start with the default brushes. And so you say, well, there's no pressure detection here. And that's true. Um, pressure is uh, something that we apply to regular brushes, not to the particle brushes. And the PD Particles, by default, uses the particle brush initially. So let me switch over to uh, disabling the particle brush and switching over to the regular brush settings. And you see here, tablet pressure is not enabled. There's another option here. Uh, let me go and clear this and see what we see here. Okay, so here's, here's the line without the pressure data applied. So now I'm going to enable and it looks like it's not drawing. Press a little bit harder and it's drawing, but it's very fine. It's a very thinner line than the original one. And that's because the size over here is set to very low by default. So increase that. And now as you press a little bit harder, you can see that it's detecting and applying the pressure. So you, you have the pressure uh, controlling the size right over here. You can also have the pressure control the opacity. Let me disable the size. And so the only thing that we have now is the opacity. And it's very thin. If you press very lightly, it's kind of semi-transparent. If you press harder, it's more opaque. All right, let's do that again. Here is very light pressure. And so you can see through it. And when you press harder, it's more opaque. And of course, you can do them both at the same time. You can do the size and the pressure uh, and the opacity going through that. So when you do very thin lines, not only are they thin in terms of width, but they're also thin in terms of transparency or opacity. And they look uh, even thinner that way. All right, so that's where you get the pressure data. It's with regular brushes, and there's a whole bunch to choose from. When you right-click on uh, on the brush here, you can uh, see a, a menu with a, a bunch of built-in brushes, and uh, that would include, for instance, the default one here, the, the large airbrush from uh, from this collection, but there's a couple of others, and pretty much most of these, pretty much any of these, actually, will be able to use the pressure data. Now, uh, there is, I said initially that on the particle brushes, you don't really have pressure data. There is one exception to that rule, though, and that is when you use the regular brush inside the particle brush system. So let me explain. When you go back to the particle brush system, normally, if you enable that, it uses the particle brushes, right? And you might perhaps increase a little bit on the initial speed here, the initial velocity. Let's give it one so it shoots out a little bit more. Um, and and that's that. So so the particle brushes, if I press hard or press light, it's not changing the appearance of uh, the, the size of these uh, trails, the particle trails. However, uh, that depends on the style. You have a style here in the many parameters, list of many parameters of the particle brushes. The style by default is a line. Now you can make that the brush. That means it's using whatever you have on the regular brush settings. Right, whatever it, it uses uh, and can use, you can see actually render across the particles. So the particle trails right now is using the large airbrush without the pressure. But if I enable the tablet pressure, you now see them smaller if I press lightly and fatter if I press harder. Right, so you can actually combine the two. Uh, you can use the particle brushes, the particle system to generate the trails, and then what actually gets rendered along those particle brushes, uh, along those trails, can actually be the regular brush. And that regular brush can be subject to all sorts of things. It can have random hue, random saturation, it can have the uh, uh, random position, do some sort of uh, jiggly move on that, uh, random size, all sorts of uh, disturbances, and then of course it looks very different. Right. But <coughs> the, the thing also is that you can uh, use that in a couple of other ways. Uh, instead of using the brush on the particles, let me go back to the default settings here for this. Right. <coughs> so something like this. Uh, instead of using that for the particle system, instead of using the brush 
to render the particles, I can also use uh, shrinking lines. And then there's a couple of other options, uh, the lines and then the shrinking lines. So with the shrinking lines, you'll see that you actually have control. Let me go and enable the particles. There you go. You have control of what the initial size is. That's the size parameter here. So they can be a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger, or you can make them very thin, all right? And uh, then maybe at that point, you can also, let's do disable the shading. And uh, you can see that, that that lends itself well to creating all sorts of hair, um, decoration, that sort of things. Maybe you can tint it. So you can select uh, enable tinting and select the color. Let's say you want mostly reddish, reddish hair. So uh, you select the, the main color, the primary color and enable tinting. And then that way that will colorize, it will tint whatever the particle colors are. The particle colors, of course, are based on this gradient. The gradient here is what the particles go through. So you could change that also here to give it a different appearance right there from the get-go, even without tinting, right? So uh, anyway, so that's that's another way that you can make this particle look. And it's, uh, it's a great way to, uh, to create things like hair, uh, you know, just a couple of brush strokes and already you have a very dense set of, of hair coming out here. You can make it look a little bit thinner, uh, again by setting the size here as if you're using shrinking um, shrinking uh, lines and look at that very thin at that point. So that's uh, a quick intro to some of the things you can do with uh, PD particles and of course everything you can do here with PD particles you can also do with the PD Pro version uh, Project Dog Waffle 5, 6, 7 and 8 now, 8.2 with GPU support I invite you to uh, take a look at that at uh, thebest3d.com Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon in another video.